to another episode of Community Voices. Today, it's our 100th episode, and you know, for the 100th, you got to bring out a heavy hitter, you know. I feel like with, the, with our guest today, like, there's a lot of talents that come through this space, man. She's such, like, a transcendent talent. Like, when her music drops, like, some the energy just, like, shifts in the world, you know what I mean? Like, you just feel something different going to happen, like, when Kendrick drops, like a Drake drops, when Solana drops, you know, you know, it's different, you know. So I just want to introduce friend Solana Scissor. How you doing, man? Hi, Omar. I'm good. I'm good. I am at my mom's for Mother's Day and yep. waiting for the Mother's Day activities to commence. Yes. Me too. Me too. I can't wait to see my mom. Tell your mom's now. I will. I'm about to try to get this um, last minute reservation at Carbone tonight. And see mm. what happens. Oh, she's going to love it. She's going to love it for sure. Okay. <laughs> cool. So you announced the album dropping during the summer, you know, since the summers. Uh, so tell us about, you know, the creative process, especially, you know, having winning the Grammy and all these things and accomplishments, like just coming together for you. Um, I really just feel like it's just the universe like trying to make me drop this album and I think I've been really anxious and holding it really close but I think all these things kind of happening is just kind of setting me up to where it's like impossible not to drop it it's like this like little perfect doorway of time right. so I'm gonna take advantage of that and like and just drop it yeah. I feel like I'm tired of talking about it I just want it to speak for itself Right. But also talking about it gives me like more anxiety about it than anything else. But it's also like I'm like relieved in advance. Plus I have the like five year anniversary of control coming up. I'm gonna drop. I can't say anything, but yeah. I'm gonna do something fresh for that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just like really excited to just come back into the world and like stop talking and start doing. Right, because sorry. it's exhausting <laughs> I to do right. the previous like here's the music listen enjoy no more talking from you you got the music out there and let exactly. people say we've been digested you know exactly yeah and i know that mental health is really important for you especially this you know for this mental health awareness month so talk to us about like you know the how what, the role music plays within like mental health for people Mm, so like for example like I dropped my crocs for mental health awareness month and it's more so like this is probably the most next to like the stock market the most like psychosis inducing industry that I can think of mm -hmm. so it's like there's so much perception there's so much being perceived there's so much um validation of self um, what is the reason that you're doing this it's like and even if you find your reason it's hard to hold on to it right. it's hard for it to be like the reason why I made control five years ago is not the reason why I made this album and like the motivating factors for feeling like you know revenge come in and out of like trying to prove a point to yourself to others um deciding like who you want to be like who you want to be and how people perceive you and versus how people perceive you and like kind of taking a stand in your own identity mm -hmm. that shit is a head trip and it definitely creates this weird bubble of like unrealistic expectations and kind of feeling like dehumanized and like right. maybe I'm a product and like it's like then it's like yeah I am a product but like what is but I'm not what I do like there's so many things that make you feel like and I'm not even as successful as like I should be or I want to be. So it's like, then it's like all the time you take away from it. It's like, damn, I want to protect my mental health. But right. then also at the same token, it's like, I have to elevate where I'm headed, like in this process. It's like so many times I'm like, damn, I'm about to just go be a farmer. My contract back to expire. Like I might as well be a farmer because the pressure of like dropping another you know, album, making sure my deals make sense. Yeah. And all sorts of things and building this life is way harder than 
abdicating my responsibility, but it's like the pressure. Like I just deleted my TikTok the other day because I feel like I'm just overwhelmed by information. The algorithm right. bullying is a whole other thing where it's like, oh, you're being bullied by millions of people on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. it's like exhausting. It's exhausting, emotionally exhausting. The physical exhaustion, the mental exhaustion does not come from making music. I love making music. Yeah. I love um, creating. It's like kind of my only source of therapy and meditation, but the exhaustion really comes from expectations and like berating and like dehumanizing from outside forces. And that shit makes you feel like, why, what, why am I doing this? Like, why would I set myself up to be bodied like this on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, before anything, you're a human first, you know, so you're like anybody else or myself, you're successful, susceptible to like all these like trolls making comments and saying like all the craziest things in the world, you know, where I feel like one way I deal with things is just really focusing on like the love and the positivity of things and just like, you know, the haters, I remember a friend from like, haters don't hate if you're not like if you don't got nothing going on, you know what I mean? Because no one's going to hate on you if you ain't doing shit. So I feel like the more haters you get, then I feel like probably more successful you are. And that's, you know, how I try to look at things, you know? No, like I literally, I look at like Kim Kardashian's comments or someone else's comments and they're like going ham. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I'm really mad about a quarter of these amount of comments in my direction. Like, damn, I'm not built for success or like damn I gotta get tougher skin because it's like I want to be way more successful than this it's gonna be a whole lot more niggas mad so yeah. it's like I need to prepare for that mm -hmm. and welcome it damn there because it's like fuck it you gotta stay mad and right. stay focused <laughs> and I'm gonna stay focused you stay mad I'll stay focused right and that's only really like a reflection of how that person feels like the troll you know and that's why I try not to take it personal either yeah yeah, yeah. but it, it's weird sometimes when like your personal thoughts and feelings align with some of the things that people say about you it's like damn like I think I think this about myself like I don't know if this person is so wrong mm -hmm. and then it's like it's weird because it's like damn what's wrong with me like why would I place negative value that someone else is right you know what I mean and like but it is also just like it's it's tough it's yeah. hard not to fall into that weird hole of self-loathing and just all those things so. right so for like people watching right now what are like some tools you use to kind of like help de-stress yourself and you know stay grounded and just kind of like remove all that negative energy um I'm an escape artist so I love to get going <laughs> <laughs> I love to hit an island or even just like a crazy walk near my house, like a park, or I love to go to the beach and just sit down. Um, and even when I lived in Carson, I drove to the beach, like no matter how far I was. Yeah. And even when I lived in Jersey, I would go to Sandy Hook with my mom every Thursday and just try to like catch a vibe or I would ride my bike in the rain or just ride my bike period for hours, like. I feel like physical activity and like being outside and also prayer is like really powerful for me personally. Definitely. And um, I feel like everybody has their own, you know, like map of what God or like <clears throat> the universe has for them. And I feel like when I'm honest with the universe, it honestly responds. And then it's like faith without action is dead. So it's like, I try to implement or just act on the shit that I'm feeling like, damn, like even today, it's like, I'm a little like minorly down about like random personal things and I'm gonna wash my hair and clip my ends and spend time with my mom and I'm gonna go outside and maybe ride my bike late night with my little broken leg and my boots <laughs> and see just like what, comes to me and yeah I don't know because you can't just like sit in something and be like oh yeah this is like this is it this is like right. this is what I'm just dwelling in because it grows right and honestly recording is like my favorite thing to do to get out of it and I never used to fuck with music like that only because when I would get in, some people love to go to the studio but when I get in the studio I feel like pressure 
Mm-hmm. I feel like, damn, I got to do something that's hot because I have really high expectations for myself. So if I feel like if I'm doing something whack, it's like, I don't want to be here. Right. I'm making something that doesn't live up to my own standards. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. Like I've started just kind of like focusing on creation and then like chasing that like light bulb moment where I'm like, oh, this makes sense. This unlocked. Like these lyrics unlocked. This shit kind of hot or this shit kind of honest. And like usually honest shit be hot. So I just keep <laughs> moving, moving in that direction and like letting it snowball. But I haven't been in the studio for like a week because I went to Met Gala right. and now I'm here with my mom. So I'm feeling it was fire, by the way. I hated my outfit. That was another mental health thing where it's like, you want to do your job, you want to show up and all these people are excited for you to be there. But it's like, damn, I don't feel confident or I don't feel mm-hmm. comfortable. It's like, oh, my dress doesn't fit. Like, and then there's all this weird comparison. It's just like, it's really unhealthy. Yeah. And it's like, damn, some people like Lizzo can have a really good time regardless of what is happening. And for me, it's like, I snuck out the back as soon as Lenny Kravitz hit the stage yeah. because I was feeling very like whoa my anxiety is going crazy so much so that I couldn't even walk down the main steps to exit I took a cab I walked like three city blocks with no shoes on but I had those latex stockings on so I had my boot my little um my boots my boot braids and then I had the little latex stocking and I just tiptoed a couple blocks and caught a yellow cab back to my hotel because I was just overwhelmed and I didn't I had too much anxiety to wait for my cab in front of the crowd and take pictures and all those things that I didn't want to do that. So I was looking like a little dirty Cinderella running away with my shoes and shit. <laughs> You're far from a dirty Cinderella, so. Thank you. Yeah. So but yeah, um, I appreciate like, you know, you sharing your own personal stories, especially with like such an important month and, you know, with JD Sports and Finish Line, like we created a series really just to elevate voices like yours to, help inspire the communities we come from and serve, you know. And thank you. I, I want to thank you for the time, especially for our hundredth episode. Vin- I'm honored to be the hundredth episode. Thank you. And man, I couldn't have anybody better to, you know, do this hundredth. So thank you so much. Thank you, Omar. I'm honored. And I'm grateful that we're talking about mental health and just I don't know. I feel like I know you so I could be that ass with you. Yeah. I'm grateful. Keep it real. You don't gotta, you know, put on a front or nothing. Like, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. But I'll let you have the last words before we you know we end it. Um shout out to your mom for Mother's Day. Hey, shout out to your mom for Mother's Day. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. Um I'm just grateful to be able to talk in this space. I'm grateful to I'm just trying to keep growing and not be afraid to do it in front of like millions of people, which makes it really nerve wracking. Right. And um, I don't know. I'm just trying to be brave so that other people can maybe be brave or maybe they'll just like lack empathy and attack me more. I don't know. But I just got to do my job and who God designed me to be and we right. all do. So. And I feel like your, your bravery just inspires millions. Like I feel like the small group that attacks you is like, a trillion times more people who love you and support you and you know find the music inspiration in their life you know thank you thank you these are all facts all facts god willing <laughs> i'm i'm trying to stay focused I'm, I'm i'm not even trying to focus on praise and love i'm just trying to focus on fulfilling my destiny that's dramatic but like fulfilling um i don't know who god's called me to be and it's hard but yeah we're just taking one day at a time. Yeah, likewise. Yep. Ooh, so again, thank you so much, Solana. And of course. Um, yeah, we'll talk later. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Oh my. Yeah, of course. <laughs>